Hey, Dan Stein here. Let's take a look at how we can add a keyframe inside Enscape to a video path. We can see a 3D version of the video path. Each keyframe that we selected is represented by one of these orange cameras. And so we want to make some edits to this path. We want to adjust the last keyframe to make it a little higher. And then as you can see over here on the corner, it clips through the wall. So when we click play in the lower left, it'll do something a little odd here and go through the corner of the wall, which is not a very good path. In Enscape, there's two ways to add a keyframe. One is just by clicking on the path, and another one is by clicking on the timeline. So you can see the first keyframe is shown here on the far left, and then all the intermediate keyframes between the beginning and the end show up as a diamond. So this next one is this keyframe, and then this one is that keyframe. So if we click in the middle here, it just added a keyframe. So one thing that it did that was a little odd is it actually added the keyframe to where we were at. So that's not a problem though. We can click on this diamond to make that keyframe current. You'll notice the path disappeared. So I can reposition myself. I'm going to hit the space bar to make sure that we're at the right elevation or ground level. And then I'm going to click the update button over here in the keyframe panel. And then I need to exit this keyframe, clicking this little exit keyframe icon. When I do that, the path shows up again. And I can see the new keyframe that we added. So now if we hit preview or play, we don't clip through the wall at the corner. So the next thing we'll do is graphically add a new keyframe just to show that option. So if we click somewhere on the path, so maybe we want one a little bit earlier than the midpoint. So I click I can start to adjust the direction I'm looking here before I get to the next keyframe. Uh, remember, I have to hit Update to save that change, and then I'm going to hit Exit Keyframe so that I can step out and take a look. By the way, I'm using the 3D Connection 3D Mouse to navigate here rather than the AWSD keys or the arrow keys. So my left hand is controlling how I'm moving around in Enscape, and then I'm using my right hand, which is my dominant hand, with my regular mouse to click and, and such. All right, so now we want to edit the end of this path. So I'll go ahead and click on that last camera. And now that we're in the keyframe, and we can tell that by the the keyframe being orange down here. And then over here in the keyframe panel, it says we're on keyframe six of six. So if I pull up on my 3D mouse or press the E key to just raise my elevation and then adjust to look down a little bit, I'll go ahead and update that and then step out of the keyframe. We can see how that gradually starts to move up from the previous keyframe, which is a fixed position. And again, if we wanted to add any new keyframes, it would be along this uh, ascending path. Finally, one thing that's new in Enscape 3.0 that's pretty nice is if you want to add another keyframe past the beginning or the end, rather than just adding paths between the beginning and the end, we can now click either the plus button before the beginning 
And since we're at the end, we'll click the little plus button after the end on the timeline. And so now you see I added another keyframe along the timeline. So let's preview this. You can see we have ease in and ease out checked, so it's a little slower at the beginning and the end. A little bit of a rough transition there just because of the, the space between them, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, one other thing to note is that if you want to change the overall time, you see that the video feels a little fast, there is a total duration. Notice whenever you select a keyframe, the total duration is grayed out, so you can only edit that and these other timeline settings when you're not in a keyframe. So when you're in a keyframe, I could adjust the timestamp, which would be how much time it would take to get to this point. And if you don't have timestamps applied to the previous keyframes, it's just spread out equally from the beginning to this keyframe, and then whatever is left in terms of time that was already available on this timeline, that just gets pushed towards the end. So if we exit the keyframe and then change the 12 minutes or 12 seconds to 20 seconds and then hit preview, the video path will be slower. And that's it. Once we have our path developed, we can save it so that uh, anyone on the design team can load this path at any point by clicking Save to File. And then if it's in the project folder where everybody has access, they can click Load. So this is just an XML file that has the XYZ position and the direction it's looking saved. If we wanted to start a new path, we'd click New Path and have the option of discarding this one. And then finally we can export this video with the export button in the lower right to save an MP4 file that we can easily share.